With VR headsets becoming more accessible, children today are increasingly diving into social virtual reality. But with these new ways of interacting come challenges. There are new forms of harassment, not only verbal, but also physical and environmental. A survey in 2022 showed that over 90% of parents feel uncomfortable letting their children explore VR unsupervised. Let's explore how we can make social VR a safer place for children. Hi, I'm Christina Fiani, a second year PhD student at University of Glasgow, supervised by Mohamed Hamas and Mark McGill, and I'm excited to present our research study with the great title, Pikachu would electrocute people who are misbehaving, expert garden and child perspectives on automated embodied moderators for safeguarding children in social virtual reality. As opposed to 2D social media, in which users interact behind 2D screens, in social VR users interact via an embodied avatar synchronously in 3D immersive virtual environments. You can play games, join events and meet people from all around the world like you're in the same room. Social VR platforms have seen an increase of children and teenagers often sharing virtual spaces with adults. As VR occludes from reality, parents cannot oversee what children are doing. There is a lack of safeguard and parental awareness. The co-presence of adults and children, as well as unique VR affordances that mimic real face-to-face interactions while still being anonymous, have led to new forms of harms like physical and environmental. And existing safety features have limitations. Tools like blocking, personal space bubbles, muting, and reporting aim to protect users from disruptive individuals, but these place the responsibility on children who might lack the maturity or understanding. They do not facilitate remote guardian supervision or inform parents about their children's negative encounters. And while some platforms recruit human moderators to intervene in cases of misconduct, they cannot address the majority of incidents and their availability is limited. Automated moderation that takes into account the unique affordances of VR has been proposed as an alternative safety tool to combat harassment in social VR. We have, for example, introduced Big Body, an example of Automated Embodied Moderator, or AEM, as a Wizard of Oz prototype. And the results show that children felt significantly safer when it was present. While there is potential in AEMs, it is still unclear how suitable these are and what the key factors and actions are for an effective system that does not only remove the source of harassment, but also provides support. Moreover, further research is needed on how AEMs can be presented for an effective safeguarding, what appearance and customization features children may change and personalize to feel safer without removing enjoyment and credibility of the moderator. We aim to fill in the gaps with the current study, answering the following research questions from three stakeholder perspectives, for experts, guardians, and children. The first one is, what are the benefits and concerns associated with automated moderation and embodiment in social VR? Then what are proposed intervention approaches of AEMs? And what are proposed embodiment features of AEMs? Collecting stakeholder perspectives from children, guardians, and professional experts can provide insights on the design of effective safety tools that are easy for children to grasp and use. So we conducted two studies. We interviewed experts in the first study and conducted workshops with families in the second study. Experts with the criteria that they had at least five years of experience in child development, psychology, psychiatry, and online safety were recruited from May to July 2023. We recruited 16 experts. 10 had professions involving child online safety, 7 had a background or profession in psychology and psychiatry, 1 in policy and public affairs, and 1 in security, trust, and criminology. The interview started with a short presentation about social VR, existing safety tools, and a video of Big Buddy. Then the interview's questions aim to gather experts' opinions and impressions regarding the suitability of AEM to safeguard children in social VR. 
the strengths and weaknesses, alternative actions, alternative features, if and how intervention and features can be adapted for different individuals. Families were recruited via a local library in the UK between May and July 2023. We conducted five workshops of approximately 75 minutes each, with a total of eight guardians, five parents and three grandparents, and 13 children. After introducing what social VR is and running demos with Big Buddy to provide a better understanding of the topic at hand, Guardians engage in a collaborative group brainstorming session to identify aspects to consider for an effective AEM. On the other hand, children brainstormed uh, regarding the appearance they would prefer for their AEM, when and where in the scene they would want the moderator to appear, actions, phrases their moderator would employ. And then they designed their AEMs in a storyboarding activity, building upon the brainstorming ideas. This is just an example of post-its and storyboards from child participants. The analysis following Clark and Brown's six-phase method involved individual coding by the main researcher and a second researcher, leading to the consolidation of schemes, resulting in separate final schemes tailored for experts, children, and guardians. Main themes were then identified across all groups. Now let's dive in into the findings. So findings were actually grouped into two categories across all coding schemes. The first one is regarding perceptions towards the automated moderation. So all the components involved in ensuring effective moderation through automation. And the second one is looking at perceptions towards the embodiment. So the physical, social components that include the appearance, ways of communicating and interacting with child users. So I will just give an overview of the categories and themes we found, but you can read more in the paper. Firstly, regarding benefits, implementing AI moderation can be useful for guiding, educating and reminding rules. It can facilitate immediate actions, offering support and incidents foster parent-child relationships, it can also ensure fairness without power abuse and maintain cost effectiveness and continuous operations without breaks. Now, secondly, concerns surrounding the implementation of an AI moderator include addressing mistakes and technical challenges, potential circumvention or abuse of the system, long-term impacts on children such as emotional, ethical and privacy considerations, we need to ensure child data protection, and there is the question about surveillance concerns and the feeling of being watched. There is also potential lack of trust towards the system and the need for human involvement in certain situations. An expert said, my sense of unintended consequences would be massive meltdowns if there was a sense of injustice. And a guardian said, I'm just wondering if Big Buddy could also see if a child has been logged onto the game for a long time. They could say, how about taking a break? Looking now at proposed interventions. We found six different main intervention themes. The first one is around ensuring rules and fairness, setting expectations, enforcing rules, applying principles of restorative justice. The second one is around positive support. So it should emphasize positive reinforcement, offer reflection, learning experiences, provide psychological support and encourage open discussions. It should also adapt to the context and dynamics. For example, it should tailor the interventions based on the severity, the frequency, the nature of harassment, and uh, if it should be in a public or private conflict resolution. The idea of having the human involved is important. So using, for example, semi-automation with the human in the loop systems. It should leverage nonverbal interventions, so using nonverbal cues to address harassment effectively. And of course, immediate action, so taking immediate steps such as shutting down sources of harassment, real time notifications to parents, and non disruptive messages or pop ups. Some actions were more focused on the victim's perspective or the harasser's perspective. So on the victim's perspective, uh, it was shown, for example, the need of emotional support and empathy, 
or empowering the victim with the decision making of what interventions should be taken. And then from the harasser's perspective, there is, for example, a stepwise approach from warnings to ban or uh, having the opportunity for the harasser to explain, apologize, reflect and learn. An expert said, to me, the most important thing it does is just tell people more information about the expectations of the space and serve as that visible reminder. As a guardian said, AEMs should black out offenders straight away, then contact offender to debrief and ask them for an explanation of their actions. In terms of embodiment benefits, participants mentioned that AEMs could appear like role models such as teachers, football coaches or parental figures. They can create a sense of protection, comfort and authority and use posture, positioning and a friendly hero-like attitude to boost engagement and foster positive behavior. However, main concerns were that it may be too childish for older teenagers and could create the feeling of being watched. There was a variety of answers for the physical appearance, from neutral to more familiar figures and existing game characters. Incorporating various communication features to create a warm, encouraging atmosphere while adapting tones and languages to different age groups, but also development skills were described by the participants. The AEM can be kind of funny, kind of whimsical, but actually it communicates the rules in a way that you don't dismiss it, but it could make you laugh at the same time, so that you actually see it as a piece of the environment and a part of the game, and it's not annoying. This is an example of an AM child designs. In the scenario, a child named Izzy encounters bullying from another user named Rob in a virtual environment. Izzy reports Rob's behavior and says, I'm reporting and pressing the button. Then there is the notification saying, hey Izzy, I want to tell off Rob. I will notify you when he is banned. There is Pikachu moderator saying to Rob, I'm angry you broke terms of service and Rob has been banned permanently. The child said, I chose Pikachu because he would electrocute people who are misbehaving. In the paper, we discussed the specificity of findings to VR versus non-VR social media, but I would like to take you through a practical contribution. If you consider the life cycle of a moderation incident and informed by our findings, we envision how an AEM could work in practice. The role of AEMs before the incident, what actions the AEM should take during the incident, and in the long term, what impact AEMs can have on children and how their role may evolve. Before the incident, uh, the AEMs should transparently introduce themselves to children open entry into social VR and explain their role and scope. They should then have clear expectations regarding behavior and consequences, emphasize positive reinforcement and restorative justice. And then children should be empowered to customize their AEM to foster a sense of control and trust with options ranging from appearance to communication features and to decision-making preferences. During the incident, AEMs should automatically detect the incident, but because they're subjective, they would require human verification for accuracy, for example, by involving victims or bystanders. Responses should be proportional to severity, ranging from warnings to banning, with tailored interventions considering the har harassment type, environment, age groups, interaction context. Now, immediate sanctions and reflective approaches can be debatable, requiring further research to understand the effectiveness of each and how to combine them. Thinking about after the incident, we should consider the action psychological impact of the AEM, thinking about empathy, support and avoiding harsh tactics to prevent self-harm or extreme reactions from the children. AEMs can serve as links between children, resources, and even parents, but there are ethical concerns regarding their role, ambiguity, and potential dependency. Thank you very much for listening. You can find out more in the paper by scanning the QR code.